Um, so this is a Japanese philosophy talk number one, uh, organized by European Network of Japanese Philosophy, ENOJP, and uh, co-organized by uh, Keles Isolasi Indonesia. So the group from Europe and Indonesia is actually co-organizing these events to reach out to anybody who would be interested in. Giring uh, pujian Hold on. Japanese philosophy. Um, I'm going to share the ground rules. So basically, if you could mute your computer until you actually uh, raise the questions, um, I'll be that'd be great. And because we have more than 20 people, it's probably the best we not to turn on your camera. But I think if it's around 25, it's okay. Uh, you could turn on your camera and um, for this event. Uh, other ground rules, if you raise your hand uh, physically, I won't be able to actually see you. Uh, so if you could actually hit the raise button, um, I think in the bottom of your screen reactions and then raise hand and your name will be pop up to the top and I, you can turn on your camera and ask questions directly to Oda-san. Um, if you have some Wi-Fi problems, uh, if you have you know, Wi-Fi problems you can't really hear or you can't really um, sh you know, show yourself for asking the questions, feel free to write down your question in the chat. So I try to actually follow uh, the chat room and I make sure that everybody's question will be raised and all this, uh, meet Dr. Order would answer your question. Uh, this event is 1.5 hours, so hour and a half after I stop talking uh, so that we wouldn't overwhelm Oda-san with the questions. Uh, you could overwhelm with, with him with the questions during the 1.5 hours, but if we go beyond that, uh, we would uh, ask him to send an email response to your questions and if you still have more questions, make sure to invite him to your future event and uh, organize more events on Japanese philosophy. If that sounds good. Uh, okay. So uh, let me briefly introduce Dr. Oda. Um, so Dr. Oda is actually a specialist of Kuki Shuzo. Uh, he's uh, one of the main, uh, very important thinkers from um, contemporary Japanese philosophy. And I think it was the first ENOJP conference that the, I met Oda-san, this is like almost six years ago. And this was the second conference he, he presented his philosophy and he was in Barcelona. And he was telling us about the first conference he went to and it was about two people in the audience, right? That oh, he was yeah, in yeah. Tokyo, you went to Tokyo, Tokyo gave a talk <laughs> and, and, and really excited about this event and turned out to be a two people. In Barcelona, we had more than 20. Uh, so that was the great success story. And then since then, he came to all the UNOJP conferences. Is now he's one of the um, leading scholars of Kuki in his generation. Uh, I read his dissertation entitled The Kuki Shuzo no Ningen Gaku. That is the um, study of Ningen in Kuki Shuzo, or Kuki Shuzo's study of Ningen. The term Ningen is translated as Japan, uh, from Japanese to English as human beings, humanity, study of uh, anthropology, many different words. Um, one of the nightmare terms to translate Ningen, uh, but it's a study of Ningen in Kuki Shuzo. And this is a dissertation was really well written. And uh, I have to confess that I use it for teaching classes as just sort of like reference work that I don't quite understand what's going on in Kuki, and I consulted his dissertation. Uh, unfortunately, it's written in Japanese, so we have to ask him to translate in the future, uh, but I'm pretty sure he will be able to do so um, and make the Kuki's work accessible in English. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to start this session. So um, perhaps I have several questions I already received from the audience, Dr. Oda. So perhaps can you uh, tell us about cookie. I think a lot of uh, audience here don't know anything about cookie, first of all. So can you briefly explain who cookie is and also how you came to, to decide to write a dissertation on the works of cookie shoes or? Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Moisato san. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm very happy so, because there are so many people are joining us today. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, Kuki Shuto was a Japanese philosopher 
he he wrote some he wrote many papers around uh, until nineties around nineteen thirties uh, early Showa era and just before World War Two World War Two just before World War Two he 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 studied uh, he studied closely in Europe and he studied under uh, famous phenomenologists like Husserl, Heidegger, and famous French philosopher uh, Berks, like Bergson. So he 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 studied uh, he studied contemporary philosophy in 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 that time and understand yeah as you know their philosophies are so difficult but he was very smart and he he understand their philosophies and imported into Japanese. Yeah, this is so, and and not only, he, he, but he he he. Uh, he was a unique and original philosopher, so he didn't satisfy with their European philosophies. So he studied their own philosophy, and he his topics was uh, Japanese culture and. Contingency, good then say, mm -hmm. yeah. So and uh, he he is famous. He is famous for uh, he wrote Iki no Kozo, the structure of Iki. Iki is uh, the concept of Japanese culture and the problem of contingency. This is his main works in his philosophy mm -hmm. and his philosophy and yeah. And my my, uh, my PhD thesis was Kuki Shuzo no Ningen Gaku, uh, philosophical anthropology of Kuki Shuzo. Uh, 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 you know, Kuki is famous because he was a, he was a philosopher, but he, he uh, um, what he, his focus was on what is human beings, human beings, human beings and existence in what he, was his main topics for his philosophy. So I'd like to study what what is the philosophical anthropology for him. Yeah, this is important topics, but it was quite difficult because he didn't write so much about philosophical anthropology in his philosophy. And, and in fact, his paper, his paper, that title, What is Philosophical Anthropology? There, uh, there was a paper, paper that Entitled What is a Philosophical Anthropology? But in fact, this paper is not so good paper. Mm. So it was very difficult, but it, this is not a good paper, but this is what he want to do, what he really want to do. Mm. So, uh, so I studied what he really want to do and, and uh, his potential. Uh, so they are so, mm, not people. They are so Diff different. Well, he's he's a strong point, and what he want to do. Mm -hmm. So I I I I want to study both both sides of of his his, his thought, mm -hmm. and 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 I want to uh, clarify his his philosophy. Mm -hmm. So that was the original intention. The the um. Is what is philosophical anthropology, and this has to be the main concern of his philosophy. But the, um, so you're saying that, that it was written rather hor horribly. It wasn't the great greatest work, even though that was the one of the main thrust of his philosophical work. <laughs> Maybe I'm asking a little too difficult question. But that's great. So you're saying that there is a structure of a key, very famous aesthetic work, and then problem contingency, and then um, these study of Ningen and philosophical anthropology. And um, so these are the major works. Uh, the structure of a key is translated to English twice. So we have uh, uh, somebody asked us the question of um, um, tell us more about the English books that are available on Kuki. Um, Dr. Oda, do you have any other books that you can recommend for the study of cookie in English? Well, um, <laughs> you've got a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, some interesting paper about the about the cookie. 
Mm-hmm. Ja, um, um, uh, Professor Marard wrote interesting paper about the cookie, mm-hmm. uh, cookie, but not so, not, I think not so many papers in English. Mm. Right. So Joe Maraldo wrote a, a Japanese philosophy in the making. Volume two, he has a whole section on cookie. Uh, so these articles on cookies in, incorporated into his book. And I'm writing down in the chat so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. It's the Japanese philosophy in the making. making volume two, I believe, has a whole section on cookie. Yeah. But the Somehow the structure of wiki is translated twice, but then the rest has never been translated to, in, into English or any, I don't, I'm not sure any other languages, but I'm pretty sure that it's the same fate. So hopefully that trend would change in a more English text would be available. Uh, there's one person who asked the question of whether or not Watsuji met uh, Cookie when he was studying in Europe. Uh, Dr. Oda, do you have an answer to that question? Uh, what was the, yeah, uh, Cookie, what, yeah, what was the, yeah, Cookie met what was the, when they were students at the mm-hmm. Tokyo Imperial University. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, I, I forgot when, when what was the, when, when what was the, went to Europe. So, yeah, but I think Cookie didn't met what was the, at the Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they they met they start in Japan. I just mm-hmm. I, dis- I remember Cookie um, actually studied in Europe longer than any other uh, Kyoto school philosophers. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us about his study abroad in in Europe? Like when and where he studied, and uh, any any episodes that he can share. Uh, uh, he studied at uh, uh, Heidelberg. Mm-hmm. Heidelberg. Uh, to Paris. Mm-hmm. Paris. Uh, yeah. And Freiburg. Yeah. Yeah. And and he studied under Rickel. Mm-hmm. Rickel. Yeah. Uh, uh, Henry Rickard. Yeah. Rickard. Uh, to, Oi, Oi, Oigen Hegel, uh, Oscar Becker, mm-hmm. Heidegger, mm-hmm. uh, ah, so, so, Sartre, Sartre. Yeah, Heidegger and John Paul Sartre. John Paul Sartre and, and uh, I, I, uh, Did you study uh, with the Bergson? Yeah, yeah, he met Bergson, but Bergson was too old and he already retired from university. Oh, okay. So he went to his house and talked with Bergson. Uh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So he studied with all these major thinkers. Mm-hmm. Husserl as well? He studied with yeah, the Husserl. Yeah, yeah. Husserl as well. Okay. Um, I distinctly remember he studied abroad more than most Kyoto school thinkers from 1920s. They study usually like one or two years, but um, mm-hmm. Cookie somehow had an opportunity to study something like. Um, mm-hmm eight years or something like that. Uh, and then he had a chance to go to different countries rather than just one or two locations. So mm-hmm. this is a quite unusual for Japanese philosophers at the time. And also the number, um, the names of philosophers that he studied are very um, distinct, uh, very superstars in philosophy and he brought them back to Japan. Um, yeah. Okay, any other questions from the audience? that won't have brewing question about Cookie and his philosophy that I would like to share. Anybody? Otherwise I'm gonna start pointing names and <laughs> asking questions. Do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions about Cookie? Yeah, Elias. Uh, Please, uh, you know, turn on the camera and, and the microphone and share the question. Hello, can you see and hear me? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I was wondering, um, so Cookie studied with all these great names um, in philosophy. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering how, um, how much did they influence his ideas? 
was it like did they really have a, a big impact on him or was it more like just meeting and interchanging ideas but more like in um repri um repri i don't know i can't pronounce it replicable way mm -hmm. it's like a do you know what the, uh, what do you, do you mean the reciprocal uh, i don't know yeah, reciprocal, like <laughs> okay. the mutual influence yes like, uh, yes yes uh. No, of, of course, yes. Cookie get big impact from Heidegger, Bergson, Becker, Husserl, and the other you know, great philosophers. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it is difficult. The difficult point is that Cookie but Cookie get big impact from great philosophers, but they. Cookie didn't accept all of the idea. Cookie, Cookie says sometimes yes, but sometimes not. Sometimes he is Heideggerian, but sometimes he is not Heideggerian. So he is Bergsonian, but he is not Bergson. So it's so this is difficult. Yeah. So he is the original philosopher, but he get big impact from philosophy. Thank you. That's very interesting. Like. It's it's really um, unique, I think, to have all these really big names in philosophy influencing the same person. Uh, I think that's pretty, um, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's very interesting that uh, there's one uh, text by Heidegger that Cookie's name is actually mentioned. Um, I don't remember the exact title that it was on language, right? This imaginary conversation with the Japanese artist. And then Cookie's name is mentioned. So um, he must have made quite an impression when he was in Europe. Um, but it, Dr. Otto is right that there are elements, you know, from the European philosophers, but then suddenly he's not wholesale sell buying all these ideas and just kind of using them to talk about his own ideas. So that's one of the difficulty of uh, com the comparative study of uh, European philosophers and Cookie. Uh, Jim, thank you so much, Elias. And Jim, can you unmute? There we are. Yes. Oh. Okay. Um, I was very interested in in your answer to the very first question about um, Ningengaku or the study of the human, which you said was kind of essential or the goal of uh, Kuki's philosophy. And I'm wondering, would you say then that the, his whole study of contingency was really from the viewpoint of understanding the human experience of contingency, um, experience as, um, um, well, experience, human experience, or was there a, an ontology of contingency as well, apart from the way humans experience, apart from the psychological experience? If it's simply the human, then it sounds like another name for free will in the sense that um, contingency means something is not impossible, but also not inevitable. But if it's ontology, then it has to do with um, the limits of reason to understand the working of reality. So when he, it, my question then simply is, is contingency for him really contingency as an aspect of understanding human nature, or is is contingency a way of understanding his way of understanding reality? Mm. Th th thank you. Uh, yeah, difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have like uh, four. Yeah, that's one of the really difficult questions, but it's great. Yeah, so, I I think that. Yeah, this is a basic question because I think that his study of human beings is just a bit. Uh, to... we, we can translate as well if you need a. Also, Jim speaks better uh, Japanese than mine, so. Uh, uh, his study of contingency. Mm -hmm. Contradict with his study of uh, his study of philosophical anthropology, I think. Yeah. Uh, when he studied contingency, 
key focus on existence, concrete reality. But when he talk, when he write about human beings, he always say that human beings is like this. Japanese is Japanese are like this. Mm. Humans are like this. Mm. So when he talks about human beings, is it in good? when he talks about human beings, he always talks about essence, essence of human beings. But when he talk about contingency, he he try to talk existence of being. So uh, uh, in my PhD thesis, I I I study this contradiction between ningen gaku and the study of contingency. Mm. And I think he he tried to to make one uh, he, he I think he he felt he didn't didn't solve this contradiction until until he died. And, um, but yeah uh, um, yeah so so I, I so I think cookie cookie has a two separate motivation mm. to understand essence and to understand existence. Um, so I think this is his, his character and the difficult point of his philosophy. Maybe I would add the, some questions to Jim's questions. Then do you think you'll be able to solve that problem? I mean, you're saying that the cookie himself couldn't solve this problem in his lifetime. But do you think within cookies writings that are ways to dissolve these issues or is this is going to be a problem um, yeah mm, i think just there are some keys in cookies philosophy and some, some other japanese philosophers i i think um, we uh, we should think about technology technique gizutsu. okay gizutsu, yeah yeah cookie didn't talk about Te technique, technology, digital. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, for, uh, like Nakai Masakazu, Tosakazu, mm -hmm. Niki Kiyoshi, they study technique, digital. Uh, technique, yeah, uh, technique is, uh, yeah, technique change the, uh, the modality. Technique change is contingency into necess necessity and necessity into contingency. Uh, uh, and, you know, cookie, cookie, cookie philosophy of contingency, I think just a bit too passive. Mm. Uh, he, I think if, if we connect cookie philosophy into some other philosophers like Nakai, mm -hmm. I think we, we can find uh, yeah. If we, uh, uh, we should get the idea of technique, mm -hmm. and I think that we can find some, uh, some other way. Uh, the so the, so the discussion of technology would be the relationship between humans and reality. And that, that, that's the way in which we actually engage with, with ourselves in the world. And those discussions will die with Nakai and Tosaka much more than in Cookie. And if you use these ideas, we'll be able to bridge the gap between the study of contingency and a study of Ningen or human beings in Cookie. Yeah, very fascinating um, topic. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, Max. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Okay, um, I have a question about the influence of Kant on Cookie. Um, there's, I've read a bunch of secondary texts on Cookie Shuzo, and uh, I always notice that it's mentioned that he studied Kant, and there's a strong influence of Kant on Cookie. Um, and I, I understand one very important Kantian moment in Cookie is um, 
the way necessity and contingency meet in the human person. But I was wondering if um, besides this very Kantian moment, there are other influences of, of Kant in Cookie, in, in your opinion. Yeah, yeah, yes, Kant is very, very, very important. Maybe one of the most important philosophers for him. Yeah, uh, actually, not, uh, in, in, in early 20th century, Kant was one of the most important philosophers for Japanese philosophers. Yeah, they, they, they studied Kant. Yeah, Nishida, Tanabe, Kuki, what they, all of them studied Kant very hard. And yeah, Kuki, yeah, Neo Kantianism, Kant and Neo Kantianism was very important for Kuki. Yes, and the problem contingency is based on Kuki, based on Kant. Yeah, yeah, Kant is one of the biggest resource for him and one of the biggest. Okay, biggest hurdle, biggest hard, biggest wall for him. Yeah, he the Kyoto school for the Kyoto school. Kant was the big. Uh, What's the big, biggest hurdle? You mean the uh, biggest biggest obstacle? Okay, it's overcoming Kant. Yeah, yeah surpassing, so you know, overcoming, uh, solving the problems in Kant, many different ways. But the, uh, what would you precisely mean by overcoming Kant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for, for Kuki, mm -hmm. Kant was to uh, epistemology. Mm -hmm. epistemology and Kuki says that Kant and neo Kantanism can't get the absolute. Mm -hmm. So when so Kuki says that Kant was Kant and neo Kantanism was born. So he went to France and he studied Bergson, and then he said that uh, he said that he found the absolute in the philosophy of Bergson. Mm -hmm. mm. So, but, uh, but uh, as an epistemology is very important in the philosophy. So he can't, he can't forget Kant. As in, Kant is also still important for Kuki, but he wants to study the absolute or anyway, ontology, ontology. So he wants, so, so maybe we can say that he want to overcome Kant and start to study metaphysics. Mm. Yeah. Do you say, so you said that he discovered that the unconditioned or this absolute in Bergson, would you say, this is a max question, are there any more specific other thinkers that you mentioned? Oh, also this person is very important for understanding Cookies metaphysics. Uh, Max, um, would you like to add something? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So, so if Cookie attempts to overcome Kant, um, could you expand on this? Like, like, in what way did he try this, or or did he succeed in this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> How did he overcome? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm, uh, you know the problem. Uh, his main book, The Problem of Contingency, is uh, based on the, uh, to, based on Kant's, uh, to, uh, the critics of pure reason. Yeah. Uh, as you know, Kant, Kant is based on necessity. So he tried to overcome Kant and and he tried to overcome Kant and, and he, he tried to introduce contingency in the philosophy. Yeah, so the metaphysics shouldn't be based on this notion of necessity, 
but it needs to be based on contingency. That's that's distinct motion that he makes that is not in Kant. Yeah. Um, okay, so Max, is that a is that a satisfactory? Or would you like to ask one more question? Uh, no, that, that was. Uh, I'm happy with the answer, and I I might ask another question later. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think Ian had some question about philosophical anthropology. Ian, can you share your uh, question? Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm I'm uh, talking from Japan. Um, uh, you know, in pre in preparation for this lecture, I didn't have much time, but um, I found a book. Um, it was uh, I think it's probably one of the main ones about the Ningengaku, and uh, the first essay actually is uh, Ningengaku to Ananika, yeah. and um, and I wondered uh, if you could give sort of a short summary of uh, what does he think the philosophical anthropology is or should be? Uh, what is his ideas or special points about his approach to philosophical anthropology? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> many things in, in Ningengaku to Ananika, so I think this is very this is difficult, but I think the important point is the I think the last sentence is I think most important. Tada hitotsu tai tashika no koto wa ningen wa shoken fawel no itta yo ni animal metaphysics daru ningen wa kami no yo nake mono daru. I think metaphysics is one of the key for cookie. I think I think that cookies thought that human beings can study metaphysics. I think human beings, uh, human beings is great because human beings can study metaphysics. I think, but so the difficult, so the difficult point is that what is metaphysics? Mm -hmm. So what is metaphysics? Yeah. This, yeah, as I said before, he started study Kant. Yeah, I, and he, he uh, the influence of Kant was always in always in his inside. So I think it it was difficult for him to study metaphysics, even even though he studied Bergson or Heidegger. Mm. I think. Thank you. Fantastic question and fantastic answer. Um, okay, John, I think you have a question. Uh, or does, do you have a problem with the uh, Wi-Fi? John Marshall? I read your paper. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, um, but something came up and I wanted to ask a question about it. Um, in the West, we often associate Aristotelian substance with identity. <clears throat> Since Kuki did not have a substance-based metaphysics, <clears throat> with what was identity associated in his metaphysics? And was this identity understood by him in Buddhist terms, such as uh, it was uh, illusory? Mm. Yeah, Buddhism. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Buddhism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th thank you. Interesting question. Yeah, and uh, it is famous that uh, the last sentence of his the problem of contingency in the last sentence of the problem of contingency was. Buddhist, uh, the word from Buddhism, mm -hmm. this word comes from Buddhism. So I think. Um, how, would you, how would you translate that term from a sentence from the. Um, the it's, it's actually translated the land of bliss, uh, I think, in English. Very famous line. From this Buddhist text. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Can you read it in Japanese again? The term? Uh, ah, uh, Okay. Uh, sorry, continue with the answer. Uh, oh, yeah. whether, whether or not this uh, identity is uh, substance based or very Buddhist uh, based. Yeah, yes, Buddhism is. Important for cooking, but okay. but uh, I think the Christianity maybe Christianity is more important for for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As you know, he he's, he one of his best friend Iwasta Soichi was one of the most important Christian in that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, As, and. And uh, he, he, he was a Christian when he was around, he was 20s, 20s. Sendei okiru te nante itarai desu. Moe kai, moe kai. Sendei okiru te nante itarai desu. Ah, baptized. Ah, uh, baptized. Yeah, yeah, he was baptized when he was, uh, I think, 26 years old. But he stopped to believe uh, after coming back to Japan. I don't know why he stopped stopped to stop to be Christ stop when he stopped his Christianity, but it was was the so it was very very important person for him. And I think yeah, I think there's there was something to some some difficult feelings to Christianity, I think, in cookie. So maybe we we should study cookie and Iwashita or cookie and Christianity. I think this is more important than Buddhism. Yeah. So there is a very strong Christian influence on his metaphysics. You you say, yeah, that it's not whole, wholesale embracement of the Buddhist metaphysics, but also very strong element of um, Christianity. Yeah. John, does that satisfy you, uh, uh, your question? Does that answer your question, John? Yeah, I, I think it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, can you, you, you can elaborate. Uh, so he, he, uh, I thought from what I got from the paper, he had renounced Christianity. And mm -hmm. uh, he's saying that um, there were still a lot of Christian influences uh, in mm -hmm. his metaphysics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, so I'll have to look into that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would have to say that he's answered my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, John. Uh, any other questions? Um, I think I have several other questions via email. So unfortunately, uh, what is it? The John Maraldo uh, and also what is it, Diogo uh, Porto de Silva? Both of them worked on Cookie, but they're based in United States and Brazil. So the Americas, uh, because I'm based in Europe and Dr. Oda is based in Japan, so we have to sacrifice all the American continents <laughs> for this meeting. Um, so we received a few questions from that end. Um, so I will just read one question from, actually, two questions from uh, Diogo. So question number one, what are your thoughts on Cookie's concern with the philosophical problem of the method? Uh, is it hermeneutics or metaphysics, etc.? What is his thoughts? And do you think it was one of his main concern uh, to do, talk about the ph philosophical method in his, in his work? Oh, yes. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I think this is this is also a difficult question. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I know that some some researcher 
some research researchers think that how many ticks is important for a cookie, but I'm sorry, but I, I don't, uh, I'm in Japan, how many ticks is not so popular, and I'm, in fact, I'm also familiar with it, so it's mm. a difficult question. Um, but I, I think that he, when he write the structure of wiki, mm -hmm. he, he, was, he was thinking of how many ticks, but, but as you know, when he wrote about eternal return, he was a metaphysician. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He he had so many, so many phrases. He's as I said before, sometimes he was Heideggerian, sometimes he was Bergsonian, sometimes he was Kantian. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's difficult to talk about the eto, eto, eto. A method. Method. Ah, it's difficult to talk about his method mm -hmm. of philosophy. Yeah. But I think he, his study, he, 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 his biggest goal, goal was to study existence. So, yeah, he, 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 used, so, he used so many philosophies and, and try to understand the existence so primarily metaphysician and very strongly interested in existentialism but occasionally he takes phenomenology phenomenological um, approach yeah i think sometimes the cookies study in in the context of phenomenology but then we end up with this conundrum of what are we going to do with the cookie uh, especially when you read structure wiki to me like i don't know what to do with the with that book how would you place the structure wiki in relation to all the other works of cookie do you think it's st still is it like a fringe one event that he just did this hermeneutics slash phenomenology of japanese aesthetics on the side or is it part of something really uh, important that he was working on Yeah, it, it, uh, the structure of wiki was in, yeah, very important book for him because okay. uh, in, in the in work he said that it, uh, Iki is uh, Iki is the way of life. As you know, in Japanese, life is Iki, Ikiru, Ikiru, mm -hmm. Ikiru and Iki. Yeah. So I think this, it, the structure of wiki is one of his uh, the part of his biggest work to study, to, the part of his biggest work to study the philosophy of life, say no mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very But I think uh, his, his method to study, uh, his method in the structure of Iki and the method in the Problem of contingency. I think it's just a bit different. Mm -hmm. some, yes, I think there, there is a gap. Gap. So, um, yeah, I think we can find his gap in the structure of wiki and the problem of contingency. Mm -hmm. But, but he, he most important, most important goal is the same. In both of both of them are, are written to grasp to get to understand the human beings and mm -hmm. its existence. Interesting. Okay, so this is also another question from Diogo from Brazil. Cookie is famous for uh, books on literature as well, right? So the, his question is this, literature and poetry are dealt with as minor topics of Cookie's philosophy to me, by at least in my view, most of the researchers also treat these works on literature and poetry as a sort of like the side project that he worked on. Uh, his poem, even though they are not very good, are always related to his personal life and his theory of literature, such as Bungeron, Bungaku Gairon, 
is regarded as an appendix to his philosophy of time and contingency. So the notion of literature or um, outline introduction to the, to the, the study of literature. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So his question is, would it not be in the... Uh, so he's, the, Diogo's question is very complex questions. I'm trying to phrase it in, in an intelligible fashion here. But do you think, first of all, do you think these works on literature are very important within the context of structural contingency or structure, uh, the problem of contingency or structure of iki or ningengaku? Or is it just a side topic? That's question number one under this question. And number two is, do you think there is very strong um, connection between his metaphysics and this theory of poetry because he talks about rhyme, you know, which is this phenomena that actually connects the terms with these sound. Uh, so his question is, do you think there are elements of metaphysics in his study of poetry? Or it, how do you relate that side project to main project? Or would you agree with the most people's uh, interpretation that the theory of literature is something that he did on the side? Yeah, 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 I think Diogo's, Diogo's, Diogo's opinion is right. I, I, I agree with him. Yeah. But, um, I, I, yeah, I think the po poetry is very important for a cookie. Yeah, I think he want to em, em, embody his theory in, in poetry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he want to he want to express the beauty of contingency in Japanese poem. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Diogo is right, but yeah, I but I can understand it. Uh, uh, but it is difficult to study Kuki's theory of literature because mm -hmm. he said that <laughs> he said that uh, to. We should make rhyme in Japanese poem. We shouldn't make any rhymes in Japanese poem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you know, most of Japanese poem didn't didn't make rhyme. Contemporary right. Japanese poem didn't rhyme. Yeah. Yeah. This is a difficult point. Um, uh, Does he uh, say why? He, Does he say why we shouldn't make any rhymes in poetry in Japanese? Because he want to express the Harmonic beauty, mm -hmm. harmonic beauty in in the poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as you know, contemporary Japanese poem don't want to express harmonic beauty. They want to express something more vivid body image. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in their to contemporary Japanese poem is much more in harmonic. Yeah, in, in fact, I like to contemporary Japanese poems. I always read the collection of ja contemporary Japanese poem in uh, Tanka. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I think, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with Diogo, but I can understand that it is difficult to, it is difficult to study cookies, <laughs> cookies theory of literature. <laughs> Yeah, so do you have think, any uh, do you have any examples of these poems, the tanka, that are the vivid um, body image rather than harmonic beauty? Yeah, you know, in harmonic beauty. Uh, or maybe just the name of a, What is his name? Ugasawara Chori. Ugasawara Chori. Ugasawara Chori. Yeah, on yeah. yeah. So this is the contemporary poet. Uh, he was active at the time Kuki was writing literature. Contemporary Japanese oh. one, like Ogasawara Tori. Yeah. It's a Chori? That's how you read it. Yeah, yeah. That's an, an, OK. Yeah, yeah. He, he, oh. His poetry name is Chori. Mm -hmm. That's um, yeah. It means the the you belong to the kinds of 
the species of birds, basically. <laughs> like birds, birds kind, bird genus. That's his name. Ogasawara Chori. Yeah. He, he, he writes the poem about imaginary, imaginary animals. Mm -hmm. uh, vivid, vivid image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's more like the, like the phenomenological expressions of like yeah, living beings, phenomenal. more something like that. Okay, yeah. So there's a discrepancy between Cookie wanted the poetry to do as this harmonic beauty and then contemporary poets in, in Japan are not doing the same thing. They're doing completely different from what Cookie was trying to do. Did Cookie provide any example of excellent poetry? Like this is the example of the harmonic beauty or was he working on more like a conceptually? Sorry for this kind of specific question. Let's go. Fujinoki-san uh, uh, um, make a presentation at, at Nagoya about the beauty of beauty of cookie. Okay. And he, yeah, he talk, uh, he talk, he say that the example, the harmonic beauty, uh, the example of harmonic beauty for a cookie was Kawabata Yasunai. Yukiguni. Okay. Yukiguni. Okay. Yukiguni. Yeah. Kawabata was, yeah, yeah. It was not poem. It was not, it is novel, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Fujinoki's presentation was yeah, very nice. I agree with his idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kawabata, Kawabata was one of the example for him, I think. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. I, um, like, I like Kawabata's novel too. You like Kawabata novel too. So you 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 appreciate both the harmonic beauty and the um vivid body yeah, yeah. bodily expressions of these imaginary animals yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, ian can you share another question sorry it was more of an observation that i, Please I noticed share. i noticed that you said that um uh, that uh, uh cookie seems to want to express the key of contingency in japanese literature <laughs> so for example, that uh, it's interesting that there's two topics he's interested in. One is iki and one is contingency. And literature seems to be a way to connect them or to, to find the connection point mm -hmm. for them. Do you think so? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, and the poem, he, uh, he wants to connect contingency, con uh, individual, and Eternal, eternal, eternal cosmos in the beauty of poem. So the rhyme is the rhyme is a uh, bridge, bridge to to the cosmos and individual in his philosophy. Yeah. Thank you. So rhyme rhymes are the bridge between individual and cosmos. I'm gonna write it down for cosmos, yeah. So, so it wasn't really a side project, do you think? The, uh, that's the original question of uh, Diogo. Do you think that these works on literature are still part of very important study of Ningen? Yeah, very important. Oh yeah, yeah, very important. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. To write a poem is, I think, one of the most important point for human beings in his philosophy. Writing poems is the most important things in human philosophy. Okay. Uh, Aliki, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Would you uh, share your question? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to ask about the relation between the concept of contingency and freedom because I was reading an article that for cookie, 
contingency has this dual quality of both uh, being uh, uh, one proper, so the matter of, so to be the master of oneself, mm -hmm. but also being very attached to historical and social necessities. So if he could explain a bit about this dual quality of contingency and human freedom in a way. And in terms of to connect that with literature, The Woman in the Dunes is a much later uh, novel, but for me that could be kind of this encapsulating this conundrum. And mm -hmm. thank you very much for organizing this event. Oh, um, you're welcome. No, thank you for coming. I think it would have been uh, strange if I'm just asking questions to others on one on one. This is mm -hmm. much better. Um, Oda san, can you? Uh, Yes. <laughs> this is very, I mean, it's a great, fantastic question. Yeah. Uh, con contingency and freedom is an important point in, in his philosophy. Yeah, he always says that if there are no contingency and all necessity, there are, there are no freedom, he, he says. So, in, so in order to keep our freedom, there must be continuity, he says. Yeah, and the literature, yeah, literature is, in fact, in, when he write, when Cookie, when Cookie was writing the philosophy of continuity, uh, in Japanese literature, Japanese literature, Japanese novelist, Japanese novelist want to write contingency in their novels. And uh, like Nakagawa Yoichi. Mm -hmm. Nakagawa Yoichi wrote uh, write some papers about the literature and the novels, the literature and the contingency in almost uh, almost same same year when Kuki published the problem of contingency. So uh, this is literature and contingency is important point, but I haven't studied. I haven't studied it yet, so it's very difficult to answer your question right now. But yeah, it is an important point. You know, this is something that John asked earlier, and I think it's related to uh, Aliki's question as well. But at, at the end of the problem of contingency, Cookie has this sort of a split or like the a kind of dualism between necessity and contingency at the end of his argument. So he's not really having this, you know, non-dual, um, you know, appreciation of the world is just absolutely contingency through and through, but it, he seemed to preserve as some element of uh, dualism at the end of his uh, yeah. problem of contingency or metaphysics, or do you think there's much more stronger emphasis on contingency at the point that all there is just a contingency? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dualism is, yeah, dualism is much important, very, very important point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when he, yeah, as you know, <laughs> there are some necessity. Yeah, there are some necessity, as you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And when, yeah, as you know, the, um, what do you in yeah in metaphysically in metaphysically yeah in, we in metaphysical there when we think metaphysically we can't find absolute contingency but we are in this world, mm -hmm. yeah. In epistemologically, we find we find the necessity. Mm -hmm. Always we find there are so many necessities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, for example, the pain falls. Mm -hmm. Always the this pain falls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are necessity. Yeah. In epistemological way, we must find 
is this necessary but maybe it's weak well yeah 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 when we can say that everything is contingency we we think metaphysically we think metaphysically and we think uh, other world other uh, uh, possibility so it's possibility so it's mm -hmm. possible what we think as a possible what we we can think that the absolute continuity that, that, mm. Mm, okay when no no it, in, <laughs> it's just uh, this is actually the end of the problem with contingency you you examine all these different categories or types of contingency and at the end of the book cookie sets up this dualism of necessity contingent so he uses a necessity contingent with the um, n dash and that's the one one thing but then we have to actually put more emphasis on contingency so uh, the precisely the kind of question that john asked it is the kind of question that you're left with at the end of the problem of contingency is this full embracement of the world as contingent and you know he uses this word of destiny um, necessity determined by the future but at the end of the day it seems like there is this divine absolute or god that is playing dice and we are kind of left with this sort of thinking that they we we are in this world of contingency so we we try to say that the you know the pen necessarily falls to the ground every time you release in the midair but our full embracement of you know contingency would say that we could easily think about the world in which that wouldn't happen you know but the um our epistemology epistemology requires us to think that it's a necessity or something like that mm -hmm. um jim yeah, yeah would you like to add something uh, yes um at the, at the beginning, you said that Kuki had um, not really resolved his focus, whether it would be human nature as primary or metaphysics as primary, but it seems that metaphysics won out between the two. And then in, in response to an earlier question, you said that he hadn't really made a clear connection between uh, metaphysical contingency and the contingency of, of free will or human free will. Hmm. And then in response to another question, you, you were talking about, about the importance of beauty and aesthetical beauty for him. Now, I just wonder what you think about Tanabe's criticism mm -hmm. of Kuki. Tanabe said that he was a darakshta bigaku. He was a, a decadent aesthetic. Hmm. And I think by that he meant that Kuki had no teleology in his ethics or in his metaphysics. Well, whether he had an ethics or not, that's another question. But didn't he kind of turn Kant upside down in the sense that the aesthetic doesn't, the, excuse me, the aesthetic doesn't come at the end. Um, that is to say that an object of art seems to have a purpose, but it has no purpose. Mm -hmm. So Kant neglects, uh, denies teleology when it comes to art. But for for Kuki, that seems to be primary. At least that's Tanabe's criticism, as I understand it. So there's no teleology, therefore there's no ethics, therefore he can never resolve the problems that um, that have come up between the human and the metaphysical. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of Tanabe's criticism? And you probably know it better than I. I just am um, going from memory here. Thank you. Very interesting and important question. Yeah, yeah, Tanabe criticism was, was um, big, may give big importance for, for Kukia, I think, but uh, uh, Kukia and Tanabe, I think there, there is a big gap, there, are big, there is a big gap between Kukia and Tanabe. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, as, yeah. Um, I think cookie, cookie, cookie philosophy is a, a philosophy of an affirmative philosophy. As you know, Nishida Watanabe was philosophy of nothing. 
ネガシオン、否定の哲学ですが、I think the philosophy of Kuki was 肯定の哲学、affirmative philosophy because he want to, want to affirm でいいのかな ?He want to affirm every being. いやいや、I, I think Tanabe was much more interested in good, good, good people, bad people. I think there s I think Kuki and Nishida, Kuki, Nishida, or so many philosophers are, in, are focused on ethics and the problem what is good. But I think Kuki didn't, Kuki's interest, Kuki, I think Kuki don't want to say no to any beings. Could he want to affirm every being, I think?、Mm. Yeah.、Um, and, 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 and that's kind of that's kind of part of the question is that、yeah. if there's no teleology in metaphysics, that everything is contingent. And if there's no tele、uh, yeah, yeah. teleology in, in human beings in the sense of an ethical goals, freedom、mm. for, for ethics, then.、Uh, Um, teleology in the sense of Moktikidon,、mm. then really everything is aestheticized. Everything becomes purposeless,、mm. right? Like an object of art, which is purpose、yeah. of Muyo no yo sort of thing.、Yeah. And、um, that doesn't sound to me, it sounds like an aesthetic affirmation, but it seems rather weak as a metaphysical position. Or do, I, I'm not sure. Do you think there's any room for teleology for Moku? なんていうかなウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテレオロジーウィークテ Maybe we can say all things are, we can find it with contingency. It means that all things may,、uh, can, all things can be contingent and, and necessity. Yeah. I use this, this, this orange pen yeah, because I, I like orange, cut orange. So I bought this pen. Yeah. So th- maybe this, this is necessary, necessity.、Mm-hmm. But We can, we can buy blue, blue pen, blue pen. So it is, so we can say that it is, con, it is, con, it is contingent, it is contingent that this pen is orange. So, so, <laughs>、right. so buying the、uh, orange. I put a point. Yeah. 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 But I, I buy, but I bought orange pen. Yeah. And I think that. Uh, he said, um, may, maybe every, may, may,、uh, perhaps everything with the contingent, but I make my goal. Mokuteki naki mokuteki. I think this was his ethics in the problem of contingent. I think. Make the purpose without purpose.、Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I have、uh, many questions about that, but I think I'm going to give the uh, uh, stage to Max. Max, do you have a,、uh, I think, related question? Yeah, I, I, I agree with, with Oda and I, I disagree with, with James h e i s i k I just wanted to say that his teleology is, is existentialist. Okay. So, and, and it ties completely with the contingency in that. By fully embracing contingency, you are able to set your own telos. And,、um, and 
And this is also the ethics in Cookie, is that to fully embrace the contingency, you also need to fully embrace the contingency of the other. And in this way, you, it is your ethical duty to fully accept the other. And if you don't do this, you can never take hold of your own telos, of your own unme. Mm -hmm. And and this is very clear teleology and ethics in cookie, I think. Yeah, I have the precisely the same question with, with Max. Um, but I'm gonna ask all that. I, I didn't have a question. I want. I just wanted to react. Yeah, you wanted to jump jump into this discussion and say the cookies theology would have to be something like the radical acceptance of contingency, both in self and other, and that's where ethical duty and uh, but also. I, I think at the end of the problem of contingency, he makes this comment like um, to fully accept the other. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the the starting point of ethics. Mm -hmm. And he then he doesn't. It's more like he, he kind of announces that, you know, this is where we start. But I I don't know if he ever um, expanded on it. But mm -hmm. but there's certainly ethics in Cookie, I think. Yeah, I mean he uses this term the um, you know aida gara no jikaku, so like a self awareness mm -hmm. of the interrelations between individuals. That that sounds very suspicious from Watsujian ethics, you know, it's, it, or even any other Kyoto school thinker is that, oh, that's precisely what we're talking about as ethics. Uh, but Max is right. I think there's strong embracement of contingency uh, in Cookie's ethics. But what would you think, um, Dr. Oda? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, then, yeah, Cookie, Cookie wrote his ethics uh, at, at the end of, end of the problem of contingency. Uh, yeah, yeah, as most of the said, it reminds me what is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what is and Cookie, um, they, it, they, I think it was very difficult point. Yeah, so this one. Yes. <laughs> maybe maybe one thing that I will I would like to ask in conjunction with with J Jim and Max is this notion of a uh, ume like destiny. That that might be the sort of like the the term that we could use to solve this problem or at least highlight this problem of what do you think he means by that term when when, when he uses this term of um, destiny in cookie mm. uh, maybe i'm just making things more complicated <laughs> i think yeah. i think um, he he cookie i think cookie don't say that they are the they are will or they are, and they are. I, I think that cookie don't say that there are no no reason. I think there are some reason. What is this? Our action, our action there are some reason. But yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I bought this pen because I like this one. Yeah, there are some reason. The reason yeah. I like this pen. But but cookie cookies uh, but Cookie thought that is this my truly will? Just uh, I think he can't believe his will. Mm. Uh, I think this is the important point. Um, so are you are, so are you I, saying that the are you saying that the buying an orange pen was your reason to buy that pen? And Cookie of, often talks about the system of explanation for reason and end result. So there's a, you know, the reason why I went to Loft in Osaka and bought this orange pen, it's, it's just explanation for why you came up with this orange pen. And incidentally, my pen is actually blue, 
So I bought a blue pen, right? Mm -hmm. But are you saying that that will is not entirely mine? According to Cookie. I think I put a point to he, he, what do you call it? We lost, we lost self confidence to mm -hmm. our will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do action. I do action with my will. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the time goes, and we we lose my we I lose my confidence to the will. Oh, interesting. That, why, why I made this, this action? Mm -hmm. and so, you so the, 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 you, so, you know, we can think about some examples where you made a decision to do one thing. Let's say we decided to study philosophy and it was our will that we made the decision to study philosophy, but a couple of years into it, we started to wonder, was it was it a really you know my will that I actually did this? Uh, so there's a kind of loss mm -hmm. of confidence in that this is mine mm -hmm. and it is my decision. But you started to wonder why yeah. I actually made the decision, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I think that I can't believe my will, but I have, we have to carry what happened mm -hmm. by my action, what, right. what happened. And, and, and uh, my action and my will. Yeah, even though we load, load the self consciousness, but we have to carry. I think this is the destiny in his philosophy. Maybe mm. every, may, perhaps everything is contingency, but I have to create necessity in order to, to live this world. Mm -hmm. This is, I think this is his idea. Everything, maybe everything is contingency, but I have to say that there is a necessity. I think mm. this is a, interesting so the even though everything might be contingent and we do have to acknowledge the contingency of myself and all the others but the action that i make according in this world we have to take its responsibility as a necessity that's the right way mm -hmm. to put it so that, that it's something that you did you do in this world will affect this um, yeah, so it's not very strong theology at all. It doesn't really give you this, you know, overarching destiny to which all our actions actually have to tend toward, but somehow we just have to make necessity in accordance with each of our actions and, and narratives, but that's about it, that you can't really have a destiny for all human existence, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's got to be more complicated than that, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm. 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 I, I, yeah, I, I, I say that maybe Christianity is important for a cookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, I sometimes remember the maybe this maybe this is maybe misunderstanding but i sometimes remember the philosophy of thomas Aquinas. Mm -hmm. I don't know, he says that the being is good every being is good thomas mm -hmm. yeah his philosophy is the affirmative philosophy maybe yeah uh, when when he, yeah when cookie Kuki was a student at Tokyo Imperial University. He, he studied scholar philosophy. So mm -hmm. he knows he know medieval Christian philosophy. So maybe this, this 
トマス・アファームティブ・フィロソフィー、メイビー・トマス・アファームティブ・フィロソフィー、メイク・メイク・インパクト・ザ・クロティズ・エティクス・イン・ザ・プロブラム・コンティニューズ。But maybe perhaps. Perhaps, yeah. There's a, a little bit of element of the divine being、uh, when you read the problem of contingency for sure. Jim, do you have a question?、Okay. Um, yes, yes.、Um, I, um, I understand,、um, I think, more or less what you're saying, but it still seems to me there's a point to Tanabe's criticism <laughs> in the sense that、um, if you can create an ethic from given contingencies of an individual facing another, But Tanami's insistence was that if you're going to build an ethic on contingency, you have to talk about the totality, a metaphysics of the totality, which is what he wanted to do.、Mm. Huh? And that, you said that was the goal of the contingency. And so that means that the totality isn't somehow transcendent. Now, that can lead to either、um, universal norms. Or it can lead to、um, a, a universalizing vision and、uh, specified in, in concrete norms of given societies. But there's always something transcending the individual and his、mm. experience of contingency. So, if contingency is a book about universal metaphysics or about, about the whole, about the totality, but then when it comes to ethics, you say,、mm. no, no, ethics is simply the individual、um, finding a way to deal with the other, then you've You snuck in the back door of this Ningen Gaku again in order to solve the problem. And I think that was, that was、yeah. Tanabe's issue. I, I agree with Max that you don't really need a teleology for a, a theory of, of、um, or, or even a, a complete theory of destiny in order to have a theory of contingency. But you need some view of the totality as transcending the individual so that ethics doesn't become、mm -hmm. simply my way of、uh, juggling. The contingencies that I happen to meet in my own personal life. That, and and I, that was Tanabe's point, I think. And I just wonder if there's a way inside of Kuki to, to answer that or to, or is it,、um, um, as, as Max hinted, something he says at the end of the book that was left open and never really developed? Maybe a real quick in, interjection that I'll,、uh, you know, the information that I make that Tanabe Hajime was the Kyoto School philosopher, but he was also the jury of Kuki Shuzo's、uh, the dissertation, right? And it was the earlier version of the problem of contingency was written for the, his doctoral thesis, and Tanabe was on the jury, and he made extensive critique. And in fact, Kuki revised. That dissertation to publish it as a book. And that's the problem of contingency. And we're still dealing with this question. But did Cookie really answer that question、uh, raised by Tanabe? Please. <laughs> Very difficult. Yeah. Well, you just came out of dissertation defense. So this got to be easier than that, right? <laughs> Tanabe, Tanabe, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that, yeah, as a philosophy, as a philosophy of social, Shakai Tetsuraku,、mm -hmm. yeah, as a philosophy of social, yeah, Kuki is not so good. Tanabe is much better philosophy of social. Yeah, Cookie is not Cookie is not so good to study the philosophy of social. Yeah, I, when he wants to study the philosophy of social, yeah, he 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 wrote Ningen Gakuto Ananika. And when he talked, if he tried to talk about the social, he, he wrote that the human beings is like this, the woman is like this. This, there, he, he, when he talked about social, he forget to, he forget to see individual. He focused on the idea, the, the idea of human, the idea of Japanese, the idea of woman, and he talked to see individual. But I think cookie social philosophy is not. Is not so good, and yeah, he is not good at study total. 
I think this is the limit of crooked profit. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that I, I don't, I don't think that cookie is perfect. I think there's, he had, he, yeah, there are so many good points, but there are so many bad points. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that we have to study some other philosophers and find the way to modify his philosophy and make, and create some somewhat good philosophy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give a stage to Max, but uh, uh, from when I read the uh, Dr. Oda's dissertation, it's quite clear that there are some really problematic comments that Cookie makes about stereotypes. Uh, and again, the notion of Japan, for instance, it's quite problematic. Um, so I think that really the question is how we can actually reconcile some of the claims that we make in in a problem of contingency that are actually really good to the statements that he made that are somehow quite problematic. And now the question is, is Jim is right that these problems are structural problems that, that we have from the problem of contingency that ended up causing these problematic statements, or it's just a fringe activity that we just need to actually rebuild the, the conception of totality or society based on Cookie's contingency. Uh, anyway, Max. Uh, yeah, um, I wanted to say that, that that I agree with with Oda that um, the, how I don't I I forgot how we phrase it that Cookie is not good at the total or no, but, so, so, so social the society. Um, I think, no, I meant the other comment, also referring to, to James that, um, as I, under, if I understood correctly, James said, like, how can you make an ethics if you don't attempt to get like a total viewpoint on, on metaphysics or totality? And then Oda said that, yes, he's not good at the totality. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some uh, good points about Cookie, but also some bad points. Mm -hmm. If I if I understood correctly, no, you're on the right track. Yes, but uh, I I would I would say that we don't forget that he is ultimately Heideggerian, I think, and that for Heidegger, yeah. his most important point was that you cannot transcend your historical personal situation, mm -hmm. and I think he fully recognizes this, and then. You know, if you accept this position, now we move on. I, I think that's why he's not trying to make a grand metaphysics and from there we're going to mm -hmm. go to, to ethics. It's like, yeah, accept that you cannot transcend your personal situation and, and then try to see well, what can we do? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I want to, to answer uh, Morisato, uh, mm -hmm. your question just now is that I think it's also interesting that Heidegger, of course, also had a lot of problematic points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe they, they are really, really similar in this way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. No, that's a great, great comment. I think um, the, the point of transcendence and imminence with the cookie and Kyoto school and Heidegger, a very, very good question. And the the thing is, I, I think the Nishida and, and Nishitani and Tanabe wouldn't embrace any notion of totality that is actually transcendent. So they would probably hold on to a similar stance as Heidegger. But as we know, both Nishitani and uh, Watsuji and Nishida uh, Tanabe are very critical of Heidegger. Um, so my curiosity in conjunction with the Max that I'd like to actually, you know, I'm gonna put something to Max's question as well, is that how Cookie's problem contingency and his ethics different from Heidegger or like Heidegger's notion of destiny and Cookie's mm -hmm. notion of destiny. I think there are, I mean, several mm -hmm. Japanese scholars of Cookie today that read Cookie's Umedon as, Heidegger's destiny. 
you know, there's something similar to Heideggerian uh, notion of destiny, but I think your take is different, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I... For Heidegger, uh, the this, she, this is important for his... Uh, Senkutechiketsuiseteekodenatiyemasu。Can you write it down on the Senkutechiketsuiseteekodenatiyemasu? Is that a transcendental decision? Maybe? Um, Ketsuise, ah, Jim, <laughs> can you think that is a transcendental deter determination? Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, key, key word for the ethics of Heidegger in being yeah. one time. Yeah, 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 I think that. Like if, if the death is important for Heidegger, uh, you know, in um, but uh, I think when yeah, cookie at the transcendental determination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, cookie sometimes, some uh, yeah. Uh, Kuki's story of destiny is very close to the story of Heidegger. Heidegger, um, yeah, he, Kuki, he was interested, he was influenced from Heidegger. But I, I think, I think, yeah, Heidegger, Heidegger's story is, yeah, for the Heidegger, this is important. Uh, the death. Limit dozen, Heidegger says. The death limit dozen. Mm -hmm. So, so Heidegger says that we sh we should remember that we die. We die someday. So we we try to live live better. Mm -hmm. But Cookie don't say that this is important. When, when yes, this is Cookie don't think that this is important. Yeah, he can. He he thinks that he can set some some more some more small goals, some more goals to the action, some more small goals. So, um, yeah, maybe Heidegger is more. Not to go. Um, maybe more Heidegger is more transcend, transcend, but. Mm, okay, so you're saying that maybe Cookie is much more committed to the immanence more than, even more than Heidegger in that regard. Awesome. And uh, I mean, perhaps that is the cause of the concern for Tanabe as a metaphysician that uh, what happened to this conception of genus or this whole that is manifested in different species and in a social self, and then you have these individual selves rather than talking about me specifically as a contingent being or something like that. But again, at the end of the problem of contingency, you do have this, you know, Aidagara no Jikaku again, that is the awareness of this interrelation. So I don't, I don't think um, Tanabe's critique is um, devastating for Cookie's metaphysics at the end, but yeah, I, I can see. Yeah. If I could add a note yeah, to that, please. in fact, I think Tanabe took learned from Kuki yeah, absolutely. in response yeah. to Max's question, because the logic of the genus or the specific or the species um, changed in 1945 yeah. and included all that element of contingency that wasn't there before. So it, um, even Tanabe himself um, was affected by Kuki's um, insistence on contingency. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds I, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah I, I, I agree with. I think that we I can we can find we can find 
uh, in Tanabet philosophy, we can find the influence from Koki, um, mainly after the World War II, his great work, I think. Oh, I don't know. He, religion, yeah. I think. When, he, when Tanabet talks about contingency in his great works, I think he is, he is influenced from Cookie, Cookie's philosophy. Yeah, but um, I, I, I'm going to read Tanabe's book and I want to study about the relation. Mm -hmm. relation between uh, Tanabe. Okay. Ian, I think you have a question about the, um, or comments on Cookie's existentialism and its comparison with the John Paul Sar. Oh yeah, well, uh, it was just um, that uh, in uh, l'existence, uh, the existentialism is a humanism. Um, uh, that it was the same idea that Jean-Paul Sartre also said that um, we have to decide without any reference points of morality, but we must also take responsibility for our actions. And his idea was the categorical imperative of Kent. But um, uh, it seemed very similar to what uh, uh, Kuki was saying there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Both Cookie and Sato, they they think that the existence is important. Existence is important. So I think there are some they they share some important points. Yeah, but but I I have to say that cookie cookie made subtle, but when it was 1926 or seven, and Sato was too young, and Sato was not existentialist when she when she made cookie. So, mm. Some people say that Sartre actually got some ideas from cookie that uh, they said that when they met that cookie said you can talk about this glass of water or something uh, with so many ways and there was some something that Sartre got from cookie the hint for his phenomenology uh, have you ever heard of that is there some truth to that maybe 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 yes mm. yeah it was said that when 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 they they met, Cookie knows phenomenology well, but Sato did not know phenomenology so well. So Cookie tells him phenomenology. It was said, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor Professor Sawada Sawada sense Sawada now studied the relation between Sato and Cookie. So maybe his paper will helps you to think this topic. Thank you very much. I guess I have a, one additional question to that. Like, for instance, um, Watsuji is very critical of, um, you know, John Paul Sartre's secular humanism. Uh, no, excuse me, the Nishitani. Nishitani is very critical of the John Paul Sartre's, um, you know, the um, secular humanism. Basically, he argues that it doesn't, well, there are several different ways he argues about it, but it doesn't embrace this concept of nihilism, and also it doesn't actually overcome this nihilism by recognizing the necessity of religion. That's the Nishitani's take on John Paul Sartre, uh, you know, the later existentialism. Do you think Kuki would agree with the Nishitani, uh, or he would, you know, appreciate John Paul Sartre's position more than Nishitani? <laughs> Yeah, uh, as I said before, cookie cookie has a two two side. Two okay. side, yeah, a good essentialist cookie and essentialist cookie. So I think uh, cookie, cookie's opinion 
it uh, to yeah they is difficult uh, but i think you, that you said the it, existentialist and essentialist yeah i uh, hi essentialist cookie essentialist. No. yeah it's okay i think uh, but i think if he lives longer after world war ii i think his philosophy must be changed must be changed like like tanabe mm -hmm. so like tanabe so if 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 he would live longer and read salto mm -hmm. i think he he would say some interesting opinion mm -hmm. but uh, Mm, I couldn't say that whether he would agree or agree. <laughs> because it's yeah I understand but it seems like from your reading of Cookie it feels that if he had experienced the end of the war like other Kyoto school thinkers he would have actually made some modifications to you know make his point much more um, explicit for the question that I'm asking because I'm asking a question from 1960s and 70s you know, unfortunately, Cookie died in 1940s, so we can't really ask that question, but yeah. Um, Ian, did you have an additional question? Um, actually, it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the time is almost up there, I'm sorry, but uh, I thought maybe I'd just make a comment that after living here in Japan for 30 years, I thought that uh, Cookie was very uh, Japanese, like most Japanese way of thinking. Uh, when I notice Japanese people don't like to criticize things or attack things, and so the other one, maybe Nishida and uh, Tanabe and, and Nishitani, they would uh, analyze and criticize and try to find the deeper level. But uh, so many Japanese people seem to like affirming everything. Uh, that everything is good as it is, or they they take the best of every culture and try to put it together in their culture. So I thought uh, Kuki was the most Japanese philosopher of the Kyoto school, affirming everything and mm -hmm. saying the being is good of that. I'm sorry, that's just a comment. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So it is indeed the time, but I would like to mention one thing that Kyle Shuttleworth uh, shared this information about this book in English on the relation between Cookie and John Bossar uh, by Stephen Light, uh, Influence and Counter-Influence in the Early History of Existential Phenomenology. So if you're interested in this secular humanism and its relation to Cookie, there's a book, um, thanks to Kyle. We have this book. Kyle, do you have something to share? Have you read this book? And would you like to share like a comment? Maybe he's not here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Damn. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, so the book is more uh, biographical in nature, and it looks at, of course, there's a lot of speculation on the relationship between uh, Sort and Cookie, but what Light attempts to do mm -hmm. is sort of draw out so the correlations and suggest that there was a definite influence and mm -hmm. counter influence. With, um, I believe that Cookie had just come from Marburg, where Heidegger was, and sort of light suggests that these ideas were fresh in Cookie's mind. And of course, uh, Sartre was uh, Cookie's uh, French teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, Cookie suggested these ideas to Sartre. And uh, again, he picked up some ideas from Sartre also. And it's a quite a good book, and it's fairly short and accessible, so I'd recommend it to anyone who's interested in this connection of existentialism within Cookie Swap. Fantastic. So hopefully we can grow the number of more books on relationship between European and Cookie's philosophy in the future in English. And uh, thank you so much for today, everyone. And uh, also thank you so much for the Dr. Oda. Congratulations on your defense. and. Uh, I'm sure uh, we would have more questions in the future about Cookie, and uh, please make sure to contact them. Again, this event is organized by European Network of Japanese Philosophy with uh, Kelasi Solasi in Indonesia. Uh, so if you're interested in receiving more information about Japanese philosophy, please make sure to you know, subscribe to the ENOJP newsletter or contact me. And also, if you have any questions about Cookie in the future, feel free to write both to me or and uh, Dr. Oda, 
uh, we would like to actually respond uh, to these questions via email or, uh, or whatever forms of communication you prefer, and then share that response with it, any, everybody. And finally, next time we'll be meeting next month with Carlos Balbosa on Nishitani Keiji. So Japanese philosophy talk number two will be on Nishitani. Uh, so on that note, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much, Oda, uh, Dr. Oda. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.